An ominous warning from Russia, it says ally Belarus could enter the war in Ukraine if Kyiv decides to invade either Russia or Belarus. The Russian foreign ministry claims that such a move on Kyiv's part or its use of military force will provide sufficient grounds for a collective response. But the official added that any final decision would depend on the leaders of both countries. Defending its joint drills with Belarus, Russia says they were designed to prevent escalation. Both countries have stepped up military cooperation with Moscow building up ground and air troops on Belarusian soil. There are mounting fears Moscow could use its close ally to launch a new offensive on Ukraine from the north. On the ground in Ukraine, Russia's defense ministry reports its forces have taken control of Solidar, that's a town in the eastern Donbass region. It's been touted as a crucial step for Moscow's future offensive, one that would allow Russia to cut off Ukrainian troops in the neighboring Bakhmut region. Oh, meanwhile, more pledges of further Western aid to Ukraine. Finland says it could donate a small number of German-made Leopard 2 tanks if a wider group of European nations also decides to do the same. Poland has taken a similar position. It comes amid growing calls within Ukraine for heavy military vehicles to boost its war efforts. And for more, Rosie Birchett joins us live from Brussels. Rosie, that rhetoric from Russia on Belarus possibly joining the war effort as raising fears of an even wider war in Europe. Any response from countries in Europe? Well, I think it's important to note that here in Brussels, Belarus is already very much seen as aiding and abetting Russia in its ongoing war against Ukraine. So much so that, in fact, already last year, the European Union imposed sanctions on dozens of Belarusian military personnel, accusing Minsk of allowing Russia, for example, to launch missiles from Belarusian territory into Ukraine, but also of uh, accusing Minsk of allowing Russian military to refuel in Belarus when attacking Ukraine and also allowing Russian military to store weapons and equipment in Belarus. So as I said, Minsk, Belarus, very much seen by Brussels as supporting Russia already in its ongoing attacks, its war effort against Ukraine. That being said, uh, we do know that the European Union is considering fresh sanctions against Belarus. Now, this is not in relation to these most recent comments from that Russian official, but rather more broadly. We heard that from the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen just in the last few days. And we may see some movement on that as soon as the 23rd of January, when European Union foreign ministers are next set to meet. Those sanctions would be in punishment over those EU accusations toward Belarus that it is supporting Russia in this. So I think it's important to note that while uh, this will be seen as some potentially escalatory language from Russia, this is not something which is likely going to be seen as causing a major kind of diplomatic crisis across the European Union as that suspicion and that accusation accusation that Minsk is already supporting Moscow and is in, seen as very much being in cahoots with Moscow in this war. Well, that is very much already the initial suspicion and the position here in Brussels. Arozi, on the of more weapons being de delivered to Ukraine on the West, certainly the US has been careful to calibrate its support for Ukraine so that it can defend itself against Russian claims of the West fighting a proxy war by sending these weapons. Now, with this new offer from Finland and Poland, are we going to be seeing any risk to uh, uh, upsetting this carefully calibrated balance? You're right to use the words careful calibration. The uh, Western nations which are supporting uh, which are supporting Ukraine, particularly through the Western Military Alliance, NATO, have been trying to strike a fine balance and sort of walking a tightrope between, on the one hand, supporting Ukraine to defend itself against Russian attacks, for example, with all sorts of military aid, financial aid, humanitarian aid. But on the other hand, particularly NATO and these NATO nations, including the US, have been very keen to stress that they are not party to the conflict, that they are not a part of this war. Though, of course, on the other hand, Russia accuses NATO nations of engaging in a proxy war against Moscow by arming Ukraine. Now, I think it's important to note that these, uh, any suggestion or accusation that the West might be uh, uh, prolonging this conflict by arming Ukraine would be seen very much as Russian propaganda here in Brussels. They would say that the only party prolonging this war is, in fact, Russia. 
However, important to note that we've seen a big change of policy over the last year or so. It was certainly early in this conflict. There was some real reticence when it came to sending particularly heavy weapons to Ukraine, particularly from countries like Germany. Uh, we're concerned about German weapons being used in that conflict. And at first, NATO nations were mainly sending Soviet-era weapons to Ukraine, the weapons that Ukrainian military were already trained on. But Kiev has been engaged in big efforts to try and get more modern-era weapons from NATO nations, and that appears to be paying off. It looks like we're going to get substantially more military aid to Ukraine in the coming weeks and months. Oh, thanks for that. Rosie Burchett reporting live to us there from Brussels.